Hello friends. I am going to try and spend a few minutes this evening and see if I can make some progress on the Carolina Herrera inspired gown. I've taken copious notes. I don't know if this is going to make sense to anyone, but as always, I'm willing to share my scribbles in case it makes sense to anyone else. But really the biggest factor is going to be what to do about extending the front bodice to create that crossover feature that is <sighs> iconic it's it's incredible i am going to be doing a hidden button placket i found a tutorial online on youtube that seemed really good i'm going to have to create some facings once i get this all situated so that's what i'm working on right now i'm trying to figure out how to make the front of this. I had thrifted this McCall's pattern a while ago, 9358, and it has this really awesome oversized sort of blouse. It is in the sizes 14 through 18, which is a bit larger than what I would want for my sizing. And because of that, I am going to figure out how to size it down just a little bit at the shoulders so that as you can see on her possibly, it is a little bit drop shoulder as well, but it is a full on set in sleeve. So I do prefer this. I'm just going to um, narrow that shoulder a bit. Here we go. So for the McCall's pattern piece, it um, was much larger. I just spent some time taking that in here. So I wanted to remove an inch from the shoulder seam. So I went ahead and marked out the inch. It's very hard to see here, but I marked that out and then folded it right there along the shoulder. And because it then was not no longer joining, I just trued up that line. So here we go. And as you can see, it almost looks like a dart, but basically I don't necessarily need it taken in the whole way through. I really want it to be fitted more in the shoulder and towards the bust, but eventually for it to sort of open up because I want to make sure that it's able to sit across my hip very smoothly. For the back, I had to go ahead and do the same inch reduction at the shoulder seam because for I, I should say, am going to want to make sure that those match up when I'm sewing them together and they do so that will work and this is going to be cut out on the fold. I might as well continue to expand it to ensure that it is able to fit around my hips freely. What's going to take I think the most time is figuring out the shirt front or the gown front so because this is the center front seam line i'm going to use that as a mark to indicate where i need to flip over <laughs> the pattern and then continue extending it so that i can get up to the other shoulder seam and then from here i'm going to square it out just sort of go straight across because those sections are going to need to fold upon itself to create the hidden button placket. So after a night of pattern hacking, drafting, this is what I've come up with so far. I've added an extension for that front part of the bodice, uh, I don't know, this dress front that's going to do the carryover onto the left side. So I watched a tutorial last night about doing a hidden button front placket and it looks like you want to add about three and a half or three and three eighths inch, which is what I did here, from wherever you want the fold line to be. So with that in mind, I have my three eighths of an inch here, which with the one inch where the button holes are going to go, you would fold that over and that way it creates it will create a very seamless finish this is going to get tucked under um, so when you're actually once you've done that initial fold then you would put your button holes right here so i would then stitch my button holes and then after i stitch my button holes i would then fold it over again by one inch 
All right, so you see that three eighths of an inch is tucked under very nice and neatly. And then once I have that sort of tucked under, I would then stitch, you can kind of faintly see the buttonholes would be here. I would then stitch this down. This is what's gonna make it invisible and also allow you to actually access the buttonholes. So I would create straight stitches in between each of those buttonholes here, 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 all the way up and down the front of this. Again, I would then do the final fold. And as you can see, hopefully you can see that there's like a little lip. So it's gonna overlap just by a bit and that way it remains hidden on the underside. That's what I want. So I have created the buttonholes on the inside here. Then I stitched it down to just the under flap. And now I'm going to do the final fold, make sure that it is about, what, one eighth of an inch tucked inside, right? And I will do a top stitch right along here to catch that. And that way I would be able to access my buttonhole placket from here when it's sandwiched and I would have a clean finish on the front. I think this was the major thing that I needed to tackle. And the nice thing is I went ahead and folded it so that I could cut off the top here, the little top edge, to ensure that when I opened it, I would get all those peaks and value, valleys that I need to include when I cut out the fabric. So I am going to leave it here. But I hope that this is the start of a really great vlog of me making the Carolina Herrera inspired gown. You all really, really helped motivate me during this past week's Friday Sews. You said to go for it, so we're going for it, friends. I hope this works. All right, so I've begun the cutting process and just wanted to show you what it is that I'm doing. I am actually doing my wearable toile in the chambray fabric that I had put in the sewing room. So that's been really nice. It's a bit lighter and a beautiful color, very similar to the other blue fabric that I pulled out. So I figured I'd get started here. I cut out the dress right side front first with the extension piece. It was attached previously to the shirt front pattern piece. Um, I did not create like a full on pattern. So I just laid it on top and sort of used my ruler to extend it down the length. So I made two mistakes this evening that I need to remember for next time. All right, so when I was cutting out the right side front, one of the things that I did is from the waistline, I extended it about an inch using my ruler here. So imagine I placed it on its edge and then measured to where at the bottom of the pattern piece there was an inch difference just so I get sort of more of an A-line so that it skims over my hip really nicely and I did that to the right side front however when I came to the left side front I forgot to do the little extension so it is just the width of the original pattern piece and as I was mentioning I did not create like a full-on long dress pattern i just use my ruler to kind of inch my way and make sure i was keeping a straight line however thankfully this chambe fabric is extremely wide so that's really nice i had the extension for the flap fold over with all of the markings for the hidden button front placket so for the left side front, I simply laid the pattern piece on top and then used my quilting ruler to kind of square it up from the neckline straight across and down to the front. And this is where I'm going to have the button placket for the left side. Once I fold it over the width that I need, I'm actually going to then true up the angle to make sure that it matches the shoulder seam, but I'll do that as I'm actually working on the pattern and did not necessarily create like a new pattern piece because I didn't want to fiddle with it, but that I think should be easy enough to do. Really sad thing is that I noticed as I picked this up that my chambray fabric has all of the staining on it throughout. So I don't know really where this is from. I just noticed this. I pre-washed this fabric and sort of had it 
sitting in my stash for some time so i don't know where that's from however i had about six and a half yards of this fabric so i have been going through and just laying out the fabric since both of these two pieces have been cut not on the fold cut on the flat i guess is what i would say i've been able to just watch and make sure that i'm avoiding any areas that might have staining I'm about to cut the back pattern piece so I want to ensure that I kind of scooch that over and find an area or a section that is widely available to me that is not stained. I'm going to cut the back piece and then go back in to cut the sleeves and then to cut a facing and I've left all of the excess fabric so that I can make the long ties. Also another thing that I noticed that I should have done is when I cut the left side piece I should have flipped the pattern on the wrong side so that it would serve as the left front. So luckily the chambray kind of is the same on both sides I'm sure yeah it, it kind of is the same on both sides but technically this is going to have to lay on its left side. So had this been a fabric that had a visible wrong side, like a more noticeable wrong side, that would have been like a huge disaster. But I'm just going to again have to make a mental note or an actual note in my handy dandy notebook for next time. So grading out at the seams, um, at the waistline, and then also flipping over the pattern piece when I'm cutting the left side. Now it's time to draft a facing for this because someone's got to do it. So I have this tissue paper at the bottom. I'm laying the shirt front piece. So I'm gonna start with the right side front piece. I'm just laying the pattern piece out and then I'm going to trace it around the collar and then I'm going to remove it and then just draft the rest of it directly onto the tissue paper and cut that out and then cut it out in my fabric. I would love to get everything cut out tonight, which would be awesome. Um, so I have to do this to the right side front. I'm going to remove the extension and then try and do the same to the left side front and then do it for the back. Oh, I'm going to save the ties, like cutting out the ties for another day, I think. All right, so here is my front side facing. I know. It does not look like much, but trust me, hopefully this is going to help it work out really well. Yes, because it guides you all the way from starting off with um, how a sewing machine works to actually creating your dress. So yes. This question is, are you still teaching or do you now sew for workouts? So for now, I'm teaching for The initial like gown portion is done, just needs the big tie. I have the concealed button placket here. It looks flat. I have to sew in the buttons. I just have it pinned in place right now. I think fit wise, I'm good with this. Like that seems like enough space. Um, and I think I could walk in it. I, the issue that I'm having is on one shoulder, I have a little bit of puckering because I gathered it a bit too much. I figured this was my second sleeve that I put in, so I had figured out my mistake um, the second time around. And I went back in and tried to ease this gathering out, but I really need to take out both stitches, I think, of the French seam. I tried to just undo, you know, the second stitch that you put in and redo it but I couldn't move the fabric around enough to remove that pucker. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, right now I need to work on the facing and also to go and cut out the ties because that's what's gonna make it look really like that Carolina Herrera inspired dress. 
of course sew on the buttons it's a good wearable twall i'm glad i could figure out the hidden button front placket that took quite a bit of time just sewing all those buttonholes it's a very long gown i'm going to hem that and figure that situation out but yeah let me figure out the whole neckline piece okay controversial idea do you think i can just get away with bias binding like put in the tie and then face it not face but like put bias binding on the inside to like clean that off would that be tacky is that tacky is that lazy this is the wearable i mean i say wearable muslin but i don't think i'm gonna end up making another blue one of this it would just be too redundant why what is this talking about Trying to narrow roll hem. Don't stop me when I'm making progress. Uh, look at this progress. It's not easy to keep it this neat. So here I did end up going in and making a facing that went all the way around. I realized that it was covering my first buttonhole. So I went ahead and added a buttonhole on top of the facing. Um, here is the inside of that beautiful hidden button front placket. And I ended up going with these clear-ish buttons from my stash. Um, I wanted them to be more clear, but since I didn't have a blue that matched, um, I went with that. Here is that facing coming all the way over. And for the tie that goes in the back, I nestled that beautifully under the facing and then just made sure that it exited here so that this could nicely and neatly go over at the flap and then the tie would come around. So that's how that is finished off. Looks very neat on the outside. I did under stitching on the facing but did not do a top stitching. So, so it does sort of just fly, flap freely in there but that's been fine. I love the set in sleeves as well. At the very bottom to finish off the hem, I went ahead and made sure that it had a clean finish as well. So that is the hem. I made it a wide hem just to give it some weight to hang down. But all in all, yeah, here it is.